And now I present to you James B. Madonna and the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman. Okay, here we are. I don't have to say a damn thing about who we are, what we are, where we're from, or any of that other stuff because it's all in the intro. Hey man, if you don't want to pause, hit the pause button and read. It's not my problem. Seven lucky bells for this week's progressive discussion show. Everything we discuss politically is part of our series, Crapitalism in a Conch Shell. That's right, Crapitalism in a Conch Shell, and there's the conch. Let's see if King Neptune has anything to say. Oh, without a doubt, you're just as pissed as they are. The uh, Yes, I will mention that right now. Yes, and there is an article, and um, actually the Ring of Fire, uh, Mr. Cousins, from the, the ball-headed guy from the Ring of Fire, uh, was furious about it, and uh, I watched his video. Yes, sir? Okay, Neptune. All right. All right, how's your trident? Is it nice and sharp? Oh, it's self-sharpening? All right, cool. Self-sharpening trident. All right, I'll see you. I mean, I'll see you. What a stupid thing. I can't breathe underwater. I'll talk to you. Ay, ay, ay. Anyway, speaking of, it appears that the, um, the mainstream Americans, the poor, the middle class, the people who generally vote Democrat, are absolutely furious, more than ever before, with the Democrats in Washington in the pacifist way they are handling the uh, Republican Congress and the Trump administration lately, they are really getting, <clears throat> I don't want to say they're militant, but they are, uh, if you want to call them, uh, uh, if you want to say that they got flames coming out of every or orifice of their body, I would say that's pretty accurate. <clears throat> um, and uh, what Mr. Cousins in Ring of Fire was saying is besides the fact that they have every right to be angry at the uh, the Democrats, the establishment Democrats in Washington, uh, this has something to do with uh, the Democrats in Washington telling uh, uh, the people, the, their supporters, to be nicer online, on social media, to the Republicans, to be nicer and it, it kind of goes with uh, Chuck Schumer telling Bernie Sanders to ease up and be nicer t to not only them, but his fellow, uh, un no, not fellow, to the Democrats. In other words, Bernie was has been being a little too truthful lately. And, uh, and people are really pissed off. And, and this includes protesters that voted for Trump protesting again and and heckling people like Mitch McConnell and and, and so on and so forth uh, 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 America is getting really angry across the board so have you uh, heard as of, well they should as well they should have you caught wind of any of this uh, nice nice of Democrats want everybody to be nice nice now to play footsie well I guess they they figure if they uh, can't be nice and they can't reach the other side. Nothing's going to get done. Yeah, but but being Which is being, fact. being nice and passive to uh, this type of uh, Republican Congress is um, equals a compromise that's not exactly fifty-fifty. Well, there is no. Yeah, well, there is no. It's, there is it, no compromise in the house. There is no compromise in the house. Okay. So it's, being nice, be, being nice to them Paul when they Ryan all the way when they want to take absolutely everything away. From the poor and low-income people, uh, being nice is not the emotion that um, arises when you're in a corner and you have nothing else to lose. <laughs> well, they will try to do what they want to do 
in some underhanded fashion as they always do. Alright, so for their people, uh, the, their people will not get it until later. Yeah. Well, the DNC has... So a, it will yeah. get done, and then the damage will be done. Yeah. Well, the DNC has not, of course, has not learned its lesson from the 2016 uh, campaign year. It, mm -hmm. it, 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 they're not embracing anybody that's really progressive. They, they just throw the word progressive around, you know, because yeah, well, it sounds That's nice. what happened with the Hillary. Right. All she was not a progressive one. She started out, or when she was, you know, she was never. She was centered. Well, a lot of um, a, a lot of uh, dedicated, diehard Democrat supporters still think that Hillary is progressive. And <laughs> I, I hate to break the news to them, but now you have you have two sides, two sides of the same corrupt coin. She just borrowed some of Bernie's uh, policies and stuff. That's all. Yeah. Well, because of Bernie, Bernie's uh, yeah, getting all the Bernie's people. popularity. Uh, his rallies were were like de uh, light years larger than Hillary Clinton's rallies. Yeah, you know, and uh, but uh, you know what I what I had posted, <laughs> I unsubscribed to the emailings from Our Revolution, and they asked me why, and I told them. I said the same thing. I posted. I copied and pasted my response. Also to the uh, Our Revolution Facebook page. It is a waste of time to go to attend Our Revolution rallies, and there's one nearby in, at the Hackensack, New Jersey County Courthouse, uh -huh. to attend Our Revolution rallies and to donate money to Our Revolution if their only, if, if the, if they, if their only ability is to send a message to the Democrats in Washington because you know Bernie Sanders is pretty much working all by himself again so to donate money to an organization <laughs> that can only send a, a, a voice to the uh, a Democrats in Washington mm -hmm. is useless and now if our, I, I had mentioned if our revolution evolved into a progressive third party, non-establishment party, then people would feel, gee, I'm donating to something tangible. I'm donating to a real team, a team of real progressives where, where there's going to be candidates coming out hmm. of that. Of a, it's a party. It's it, in other words, I could say goodbye to the Republican and the Democratic Party. I could, I could say bye bye to them, and, you know. And and you, it's like, it's like somebody who belongs to the um, to the Elks Lodge. Mm -hmm. They belong to something, or the Knights of Columbus. Even though Columbus was a scumbag, you know, they belong to some tangible, tangible. Now, we all know, and I was speaking to... Or the uh, Moose Lodge. The Moose Lodge. Was that think, the one? Uh, yeah. The Honeymooners? No, I was the, the, the Loyal Order of Raccoons. The Raccoons, yeah. What about the Shriners? Aren't they kind of, they're, they're kind of fancy, right? Shriners are a group. They're of, uppity. They're, uh, they're, they're uh, muckety-mucks. No, no, well, they take care of um, St. Jude's Hospital. Real worthy cause. They pay for all the kids and everything. Yeah, no, they're real worthy. You know, real worthy causes. Yeah. Um, I don't know how much they get, you know, but... They, but, you know, uh, getting back to some tangible, okay. like, for instance, I'm going to use this as a... Hey, my, my chili, man. Uh, this is a little too mild for me. Don't think I eat this. this I is, had it yesterday, this is other one. the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman's uh, can. Or not his ass, I mean his can. This is tangible. You 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 know what it you know what it is. It's a can. It's got a pretty red flip top. You know what's inside of it. It's tangible. The only thing our revolution can do is send a message to Washington. Who's in Washington? Establishment Democrats. And 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 the lone wolf, Bernie Sanders, all by his lonesome. Uh, tangible. Speaking of tangible, I hear Donald Trump wants to uh, rever get rid of the uh, Federal Reserve and go back to a gold-backed uh, uh, 
Well, I guess, I guess there's not going to be any money for the poor because you told me they can only print so much money. That's right. There's only so much gold in the world. Yeah. Well, I was talking to William H. Morrow after a But I long... never heard him say anything like that. Who? Trumpy. No, there's just tons of no, articles. I never heard him say that. That he'd like to go back on the gold stand. Well, I guess there's Never a lot. There's a lot of people posting a lot of videos and a lot of articles online. Possibly. You know, but but but, you know, I was talking to William Moore about how, as every week flies by, there is more and more insane things <laughs> coming out of the mouth of Donald Trump. <laughs> That's for sure. Hey, he was accusing Barack Obama of taking too many vacations, but look at all the vacations he's taken so far. Already in a month and a half. He's going to break uh, w, uh, GW's uh, uh, record in no time. I didn't. I didn't even. I didn't think um, old man Bush went to Kenny Bunkport really that often, did he? No. I mean, he did. No, he, I'm talking about uh, GW. Oh, W. Yep. Yeah. And Ronald Reagan. Those two, you know. Yeah, they, well, they had a lot of vacations, and that's not counting the lavish lifestyle that uh, uh, that Trump's family is uh, more taxpayers' money because of the uh, Secret Service. Yeah, New York wants the money back for uh, protecting him. It's something like uh, thirty-two million dollars already, or it's something. A, it's not. It's not the uh, the city of New York's fault if if malaria Trump and 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 Barron don't feel like. Staying in the White House, hey, Barron can get a tutor. He can get tutoring in the White House, man. Yeah. He can easily get the finest tutoring that you can toot at. Toot toot. Toot toot. You know, I mean, seriously, no, yeah. no, no, no uh, joking. You know, I mean, I mean, there's not, there's nothing that would hinder Barron's education if he lived um, in the no, White House. Not at all. You know, so uh, this is all an excuse because. The mega rich are spoiled, and they just have to have what they want, and blah blah blah. Same old crap. So um, that's pretty much it. Um, uh, the um, Mr. Stephen, you know the person who had issues that were resolved with social services he told me that uh, he um, he got a letter that his Medicaid card is still good until May but he can't use it it's good but it's no good in other words he tried to pay for his pharmaceuticals with it and uh, the pharmacy at Walmart says it, it's rejected so he called the office and he said uh, they keep on saying, yeah, it's good till May, but, you know, you can't use it because you had Affordable Care Act, uh, Horizon of New Jersey. He says, yeah, but they dropped me uh, because I got Medicare. They dropped me. So, and they, and they kept on playing a mind game with Stephen on the phone. You know, I mean, it's good till May, but blah, 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 stupid reasons you can't use it. Mm -hmm. So it's Dunzel, of no useful purpose, but it doesn't expire until May. So that's the, uh, the good old state of New Jersey for you. Well, any state social service programs, they all suck, especially if you have a Republican governor. They suck the big one, people. And uh, I told Steve to tell them that if you were a corporate CEO and you wanted a hundred million dollars I'm sure you would get it no questions asked with the drop of a hat but if you're a little guy that needs a little help <clears throat> forget it so uh, but you know what mm. more desperate people becoming poor and homeless means more free slave labor in privatized prisons and Donald Trump is all for privatized prisons from uh, what I hear yeah 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 what else is new of course the rich are for slave labor yeah <laughs> woman 
Mexican woman lived in the United States for over 20 years. Her children were born and raised here. Guess what? She's being deported. Yeah. You know, uh, all the farmers that uh, work the uh, all the all the, the farms uh, down south, they all split. They don't. They don't want to get deported. Guess who was stopped from uh, coming in the other day? Who? Muhammad Ali's son. Oh, gee. And they ask him a very important question. Yeah. Where'd you get the name Muhammad? From my father. <laughs> Dopes. Where'd you get the name Muhammad? Yeah. Did he? I hope he said, you ever hear of my dad, Muhammad Ali, flaps it in a butterfly and sting like a bee? Obviously those I mean, floats did like not, a butterfly. Did not know No, they father. just heard the word, yeah, let me do Haruko so. They only heard the word Muhammad. <laughs> Cassius Clay. And they used that again. No, Cassius Clay was a slave name. And they used that against him. You know when Muhammad Ali came back from, I believe, yeah, winning gold medal in, in the uh, Summer Olympics? Yeah, 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 yeah. He had to come home to, uh, to much racism in uh, Louisville, Kentucky. Even he, even he, an Olympic gold medalist. Yeah, well, that was before 1965, correct? Yeah, yeah. Well, that's why, because the civil rights laws were not in effect yet. We were still under Jim Crow. What a stupid fucking question to ask Muhammad Ali's son. <laughs> I know. That that That's the only thing they were interested in? Can I ask you a All question? Was Muhammad Ali's son born... In, 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 and grew up in the United States of America. Yeah. And what's their fucking problem? Because I he's my habit. He, he they, was he was somewhere else, and they, he was coming back home. So he's got to be afraid now to 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 go abroad to to travel abroad. That's what it looks like. You're a born and raised in the U.S. I don't care about that. I want to know more about your first name, Muhammad. <laughs> Where'd you, you get that name? This conk, man, <clears throat> this conk has more benefits than just a prop and a telephone to King Neptune. Mohammed! Which sounds better? Mohammed! No, this is better. Mohammed! Anyway, it's absurd. It's absurd. You're talking about a, <laughs> a conservative ilk that is uh, very much like the right-wing uh, Roman Catholic Church in, in uh, back in medieval times. Anti-science, anti-education, anti-progress. Mm -hmm. And um, <coughs> they want to turn, the Republicans want to turn back the clock. Right. To at least the 1950s. What? Well, they think the 1950s were great. 1950s had a great president of, of Dwight Eisenhower. With a night, with a nice juicy ninety percent tax rate on the rich, with with prosperity. There's nothing wrong with Eisenhower's. Uh, you know, they never say much about that. No, they don't mention it. They, you know, it's like they don't know it. You know. Well, he's not right wing enough for them. Well, no, no, I I don't think they know what the rate was. Are they that fucking stupid? Absolutely. Well, Ronald Reagan was just a just a, a a famous puppet. Ronald Reagan was not a rocket science scientist. I mean, he, he they say Hollywood said he wasn't a very good president of the Screen Actors Guild either. No, he wasn't. You know, but uh, he, uh, I'm sure Reagan followed orders to. Uh, well, that's what the Republicans want when they want a president. To finagle with the tax uh, and rate. Uh, 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 House members and. and they want people who will do what they want. Listen, getting back to the fit, uh, the fit, the original fair progressive tax system. Let's go back to Eisenhower. Yep, the rich pay their fair share in taxes. Guess what? They're still living on high on the hog, and they're still rich, despite their crocodile tears and their whining. The more money. So I gotta be. I gotta talk simple to you Americans out there, because you're all a bunch of uh, imbeciles and numbskulls. The more money you put back into the pocket of the little guy, the more the economy is stimulated, because the more money goes back into the economy through spending. You lame brains. Customers. 
Yeah, it's called the customer. Moves the economy. The customer moves the economy. How many refrigerators does the rich buy? Does the rich buy? Right. Uh, you know, a, a friend of mine uh, said to me, uh, "Yeah, but um, the rich buy less, but they they uh, they pay much higher sales tax because they buy expensive items." I says, "Yeah, but sheer volume alone, they, That's it doesn't compare to the taxes that are collected from the middle class and the poor." We're talking volume, man. Volume is the answer to wealth. But hey, listen, a car dealer that sells, I, I, I won't pick an expensive car, I, let's say a Honda. Good car, a car that sells itself. You get a Honda dealer that's pretty well established, all right. Then you compare that to a um, supermarket chain. Now, of course, the the uh, the markup the profit is much higher with the car dealer but that supermarket chain man <laughs> they make money on high volume high volume so they they may they very well may greatly I'm sure they do greatly surpass the profit of the uh, car dealer which has its ups and downs you know and uh, what a look, look at Walmart I'm sure they make money on volume yes you know, I mean, how much the that's markup? The, that's the whole uh, policy behind Walmart's. Is you know, low prices from their producers, and low prices so selling to the customers. Right. Therefore, you sell to more right. customers. Hey, economics 101 in a conch shell, made simple for the general public by. Yours oh. truly and Dr. Bill of uh, Progressive Discussions, <clears throat> um, Newsletter Censored, Mega Life 21. I mean, you have to. Uh, listen, we pull no punches. There's no holds barred here. We don't try to act cute. We don't, you know, when we crack jokes, it's totally uh, ad libbed <clears throat> off the top of our head. Nothing is planned. Just like, kind of like when Jackie Gleason did the Honeymooners. That's the way I like it. Ad -libbed. and uh, I did a, I did a um, I want to thank uh, mm -hmm. Mick Von Raven for doing a, a wonderful enjoyable show with me progressive discussions after dark the other day live streamed from mm -hmm. YouTube I love it I love it you know what the you know what the beauty of a live stream show on YouTube is Besides not having to pay for any software. Well, what's the title? That was After Dark was the title? No, well, the, the main topic was the assholes of social media. I know, but when you want to go find it. Yeah. What's the title you use? Progressive Discussions After Dark. Okay. Because I, uh, well, you'll see the gimmick, why I call it After Dark. It's actually After Dark, but yeah, I, I make it look After Dark. Let's put it that way. I believe there was an HBO program like uh, yeah. that. Sort of Dark time. Shadows. When I was a little kid, they used to scare the crap out of me. Ah, oh, come on. He was not a good vampire. Barnabas? Barnabas. Oh, but I was man. a little kid. I was in fourth grade, man. You Third. ever seen Nefertuti or whatever he was named? With the big long finger. Oh, the German guy. Uh, that's uh, Nosferatu, Nosferatu, man. Yeah, him. Nosferatu. There's something would have frightened you. When he, creep, when he creeped up on your bed. Women tend to get turned on by a man biting their neck. They like their neck manipulated. Touched. <laughs> well, touch is a very important thing yeah. for animals and... But the biting animals. of a woman's neck is, is okay. erotic to, to the woman. It's, it was sensual, yes. Yes, yeah, sensual. But getting back but to... But when the blood gushed out... That's more exciting. Like on a fucking... Uh, What's that program? Uh, I, I think it's on AMC. Go, it was go, a gory program. Well, well it, it's got vampires. Yeah. And they're in the city with normal humans, and, and they bite, you know, humans. Oh, Wesley Snipe! 
Oh, that one. Oh, yeah. and and the uh, Quentin Tarantino movie that he did out in uh, the desert of Mexico with Cheech Marin. I don't know about that one. Yeah, right? they were. Well, it's right. gore. It, see, today people yeah, were, blood, blah, 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 you know, like come out like a hose. Listen, this is why, even in professional wrestling, peop, the wrestlers have to do much higher risk maneuvers because people got bored with the right, yeah, of of wrestling that maybe Over you know the, the wrestler went home healthy see now they want to be entertained but they don't care about what happens to the person who's entertaining them well you know i mean uh it's like what my grandfather said mark my word they will bring back the roman coliseum style Gladiator. entertainment people will become so desensitized and 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 sadistic they, they will slowly uh, will look at the UFC, Ultimate Fighting Competition. Yeah, you know. well, we, you know, we already have it there. And yeah. then, of course, you got, well, you got two Timothy, three in the Bible. Exactly. You know? All right, now getting back to live streaming on YouTube. Yes, it is free, but this is what I love about it that I was actually unaware of. Now, you got the show going. Yeah. Did you know that when a person speaks, uh, the program automatically goes to the person who speaks and makes that person widescreen, like the whole screen? Like, let's say, let's say I, I'm not around, I'm not in the area, and let's say I'm doing a show with you. You start giving a reading. In a second, it goes to, it goes to you giving a reading. Then I start talking. Then it goes to me. It makes me a big screen. And then let's say there's a third or fourth person. Let's say you got three guests. Then Joe Blow from Idaho starts to talk. And then he becomes big screen. You don't have to press anything. You got your own director. That's what it's that is. It's automatic. That's what the director does. You understand? Public it's director. automatic. Yeah. I don't have to click on anything. Well. That's what amazed me. Now it's automatic. Amazed. All right, so you're amazed now. No, but I'm just saying, it is amazing. It's automatic. Whoever talks automatically gets the big screen without you having to, to press any buttons. So. Anyway, let us sink our teeth into these damn readings, please. We're going all natural because it's, uh, what is it, a high of 65 degrees Fahrenheit today? I don't know exactly, but yeah. it should be somewhere around. Is there a holiday coming up this week or not really? Is there anything coming this up? This week? No. Not really. Nothing. We're done. President's yeah. Day. Yeah, and that was it. Then it's like uh, the 28, was it 28 days? And for, uh, for February. And then leap year would be 29 days in February, right? You only got 28 this year. Yeah. I planted some herbal medicinal... Hmm. Herbal seeds yesterday, but I have to put a mesh screen dollar store hamper over the uh, the seeds because when I plant seeds, the damn birds like to come and eat my seeds. Huh. But when I put the the mesh screen thingy, they they don't get to it. There you go. Alan Combs. Okay. The radio and television host and commentator. Right. Best known as the amiable liberal foil to the hard right Sean Hannity on Fox yeah. News Channel has died. Holy shit, the famous Alan Combs. Wow. You know, oh you know, Jimmy Dore is great. I don't know if you ever listened to him, no. but the aggressive progressive Jimmy Dore. If you want to know a a a a an aggressive progressive. Yes. You go online and look up Mike Malloy. I heard of him. Well, you don't want to hurt of him. You want to hear him. No, hear Jimmy Dore. Every day. Oh, not only does Jimmy Dore get to the nitty gritty, but he gets pissed. Yeah, well, so does Mike. He, Mike, Mike, he, Mike will tell you. Uh, have I told you how much I hate these fucking Republicans? I that, mean, he'll, that's he'll, good. He'll, that, I like that. That's one of his things. I don't know why these guys don't get a time slot on Aura TV along with Jesse Ventura and uh, Larry King 
you know what I mean, a, a, a bigger company, a bigger streaming company. Because he, these are, these are bona fide talents. Mm -hmm. The Jimmy Doors, the Mike Malloys, the uh, the cousins. Uh, I forgot his first name. Uh, co something cousins of Ring of Fire. He's bald headed. Uh, Sank. I don't know, man. Sank. I get the feeling Sank was supporting Hillary Clinton when uh, uh -huh. he, he almost had a fist fight with uh, Alec Jones, who barged in on his show. Uh -uh. Yeah, Alec Jones tried to taunt him. And, uh, I don't know. It's well, Alex Jones, you can only take so far. Well, he's a libertarian, and but he's, he's a, off the wall. No, he likes Trump. Okay. And he he's a right. Yeah. He's a right wing libertarian. See, me and you, we're more like populist. We're like populist, either populist. Well, I have no label. I am just a human being. Now, what what Who seems to know in certain instances, right from wrong. Now, a populist is uh, very close to uh, democratic socialism, right? Populists are for the people. Well, like 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 Northern Europe, the democratic socialism. If that's what they want to call it. Right. But you know, when you're for the people in America, you're for democracy. I wish Americans go to the dictionary and please read the political. No, they don't. Um, political definitions. They need to read them. Too much of the uh, Cold War has painted their ideas of socialism and communism. Oh, like that douchebag McCarthy. Well, of course, yeah. McCarthyism, the douchebag. Joseph of McCarthy. You know, no, yeah, yeah, Pinko Kami, right, 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 people, 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 yeah, yeah, McCarthy. McCarthy was probably a corporate whore. Well, I'm sure he, you know, he had his, yeah, his suppliers. You know, but all the evil really started with the Industrial Revolution, and those guys, J.P. Morgan and his buddies. Well, in a capitalistic sense. In a capitalistic sense, yes. But there's always been evil in the world. Well, they had monarchies. They had monarchies, they had baroness, baron nun nun nuns, they had uh, all, uh, you know, all kinds hey, of uh, let me different uh, eco e economic systems before Listen, uh, capitalism. Robin Hood with the jolly, or the jolly chubby Friar Tuck and his band of merry men were not allowed to hunt in the king's forest. For the kings and shoot the king's deer with the arrow. That's correct. Because everything belonged to the king. Because I guess because he said so. And he had the power to invoke it. Yes, and the Irish had a mere plot of land around their cottage, around their home. They they couldn't have any industry in Ireland. Hmm. No agriculture of any kind. They normally, you know, they had beef. They raised cattle. They, 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 they had a commercial, uh, I think, cod fishing industry. But the king says, no, it's all mine. Thank you. Yeah. Anyway, it sounds a lot like today, you know? Of course. Uh, today we say corporate oligarchy. Back then they said imp imperialism, uh, feudalism, monarchy. There you go. All right, continue, Buzz. Fox spokeswoman Dana Klinghoffer confirmed his death on Thursday. Fox also aired a tribute to Combs, narrated by Hannity. How old was Combs? Sixty-six. He's a rather young man. That's correct. And a statement from his family saying he died Thursday morning after a brief illness. Combs was sixty-six. And is survived by his wife Jocelyn Elise Crowley. The sister of longtime Fox contributor Monica Crowley. Yeah, I never liked the word Jocelyn. It annoyed me. In a statement issued through Fox, the name Jocelyn. Hannity called Combs one of life's most decent, kind, and wonderful people. On a personal level, he most likely was. Combs was a New York City native. 
Hofstra University graduate who worked for years in radio, notably on WABC and WNBC, yeah. and performed stand-up comedy really? before joining Fox in 1996. So that, uh, that uh, accounted for his, per his radio personality. Yes, so. His personality. Uh, uh, um, see, uh, Alan Combs represented old-time American journalism. That same year, he and the conservative Hannity began a 12-year run as co-hosts of the popular Hannity and Combs program. I remember that. Which brought Combs both fame and ridicule. Admittedly, a minority voice on the conservative channel, Combs was often mocked as too nice and easily overshadowed by the ever-aggressive Hannity. You see, he applied the, uh, the old hipster pacifism of the, uh, of the old uh, neoliberal hipster, uh, you know, make nice nice with everybody. Please like me. Please love me. <laughs> the liberal media watchdog, fairness and accuracy in media, likened him to the hapless Washington generals, the dependable losers to basketball's Harlem Globetrotters. Meadowlark Lemon, Curly Neal, I remember them well. Al Franken. In his best-selling Lies and Lying Liars, who tell them, imagine Combs earning his salary by adding toner to the copiers and printers. Lufa in a Roger Ailes in his personal steam room and ordering Chinese food for editors working on misleading video packages. Hey, what's wrong with Chinese food? I love it. Combs was aware of the criticism, but he said getting mean was not his style. And that's his downfall. People say to me, why don't you fight fire with fire? He told the Associated Press in 2003. Quote, you fight fire with water, not fire. Unless the fire is coming from the sun, then it'll, it will evaporate the water. He was also an author, his books including Thank the Liberals and Red, White and Liberal. Yeah, and give it to me up the ass, yeah. Oh boy. Well, you know what? Uh, anybody else die recently? <laughs> Not that I know. Famous. I think we did our little moment of silence last night. Last time. week, for a couple Well, of weeks. you know what? A moment of silence for Alan Combs. All right. He deserves it. Mm. Okay. Moment of silence for Alan Combs. And, um... I, you know, I just want to thank my friend in uh, the Philippines for sending me the, these two lovely t-shirts. Erlene Calalas, I salute you. Thank you for these lovely, very festive, tropical looking uh, shirts. Domaguetis. It is a resort uh, town in, I think, it's the southern uh, archipelago of the Philippines. Archipelago. Look it up if you don't know what it means. I'm not going to explain it. The White House unsuccessfully pressed the FBI and other intelligence agencies to discredit recent news reports asserting alleged contacts between associates of President Trump and the Russian officials. The official, who is not authorized to comment publicly, said the White House sought to specifically rebut reports earlier this month in the New York Times claiming that Trump associates had repeated contacts with Russian intelligence officials 
during the course of the past year. CNN first reported the development earlier on Thursday. In addition to the FBI, the official said other agencies were approached with a similar request. The official declined to elaborate or identify which agencies received similar requests from White House Chief of Staff Rance Priebus. Earlier this month, a U.S. official said a months-long inquiry into contacts between Russian government officials and associates of Trump's campaign and business interests was continuing despite the firing of National Security Advisor Michael Flynn for misleading White House officials about his communication with Russia. The federal inquiry, which has amassed intercepts of telephone calls, business records, and subject interviews, is looking at how Russian officials sought to meddle in the November election, said the official who was not authorized to comment publicly. The official added that there was no current evidence of collusion to tilt the election. The extent and purpose of those alleged contacts believed to involve a limited number of Trump campaign and business associates continue to be weighed including whether the associates were aware they were communicating with Russian intelligence officials or those working on behalf of the Russian government. Hmm. Well, this uh, article today was stating that uh, the Supreme Court does in fact have a lot of clout involving uh, the um, Russian involvement in Donald Trump's uh, winning the election. They, they can investigate and they can do something about it. I, I mean... Uh, Not the Supreme Court. The Supreme, I'm saying the Supreme Court, the article is saying the Supreme Court can do something about it. Yeah, but it can't investigate it. Cannot investigate it? Yeah. What investigative arm do they have? You bring a case to them and they judge the case, whether it's constitutional. So, so they need That's an all their job So is. they need an outside organization to, to investigate for them. Well, obviously the FBI and uh, 15 other intelligence agencies are investigating. So, what happens? We don't know yet. Well, that's what's good about having an FBI and uh, a CIA that uh, can work independently of the president that's in office because uh -huh. the president that's in office could be stark raving mad and have or or have malicious intent or a malicious uh, uh, agenda agenda. So you know you. How else could you hold anyone's feet to the fire if uh, the governor or the president has control over everybody? Well, yeah, and that's like that guy Stevens, Stephen, whatever his name is, uh, for Trump, one of his advisors or whatever. If the president does it, there's no law against it. He can do anything he wants. It's the same thing with. It's like he's a dictator. It's the same thing as the Republican Congress passing a law that they cannot be investigated for wrongdoing. That Talk about obvious uh, 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 obvious guilt that they're trying to hide. And corruption. And, cor and corruption, that's a red flag and a half. Yeah. You see, people uh -uh. should look for not only patterns, patterns be formed. 
uh, but they should also look for red flags. And, uh, these are two skills that are that seem to be lacking today. I recognize what the opinion section is. However, I take exception to the record giving almost full page coverage with only one purpose in mind. That is trying to drag President Donald Trump through the mud. Mm, well, if, uh, if he's already, if he already has mud in his sandbox <laughs> and he's already playing in it, then he might as well be dragged through it. He's only been in office one month. <laughs> he is having a bit of a rocky start. A bit. But he is determined to accomplish getting things done for a change. He is actually falling through on his campaign promises. When was the last time that's been done? Mm. Let's give him a chance. He is your president, too. We've had many worse presidents in mind. Jimmy Carter, Millard Fillmore, Herbert Hoover, to name a few. I agree that we should have left Washington and Lincoln's birthday separate so that their outstanding performances stand out. I am surprised someone hasn't suggested that even in Washington. Well, they like that retail holiday with all the retail sales on a Monday. Father of our country should be ostracized because he was a slave owner. Well, weren't they all the founding fathers? Yeah. Yes, they break. were. You know, uh, um, uh, well, the one thing I agree with Donald Trump on is the fact that being that this country uh -huh. is in such deep turmoil that the attitude of America should be come, should come first, I agree 100%. We're, we have to stop giving money to these other countries really, especially Israel. We have to stop giving money to our enemies like Saudi Arabia. Uh, we have to stop giving money, period. We can't afford to be giving taxpayers money to other countries. You know, as much as we like to help some of them, we can't do it. Well, and, you the, know, the amount of money that we do give in those areas is uh, small. Not to Israel, it's not. It's six billion a year. Not to Israel, my friend. Six billion a year. Yeah, that's right. All. Yeah, they're sucking up a lot of money, Net Netanyahu. Uh, that's all. Um, what else? The is money it? that we give to corporations is a vast amount compared to uh, that's uh, that those amounts given to other countries. Why? Why are there so many? Uh, Israel kiss asses today. Please, you collectively. Understand something. Collectively. Go and look at the history. Go to 1948. Look at the history of Israel, the country. 1948. Yeah. And then you'll understand why they need help, why they are picked on. Someone like uh, the, well, the president of Iran wants to drive them off the why does the it coast. why does Israel like to to blow Palestinian children to, to smithereens <laughs> because they are there <laughs> they're still kids <laughs> I know but the the, the, the people the, the Palestinians want to do away with Israel so does, does you know, Isra what are you gonna do does Israel want want, 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 to, want to recognize Palestine as a uh, independent... That is one solution. It has not been incorporated in years. Okay? For years. They get together, they yak it out, the bum bum bum, Camp David uh, with the uh, Carter and etc. and nothing ever gets done. Hey, doesn't Europe have a tiny country named uh, Luxembourg? Yeah, and I doubt if he even has an army. And, and and a couple other little microscopic countries. But they're not hated like Israel is. Israel is hated by the Arabs. Right. It had to win. It had to win wars to stay in place. 
Six Day War. Look up the Six Day War. Yeah. Well, that's See what happens. Uh, you mean you mean for its very existence? For its very ex existence, yes. Hey, look! Look at you know what's worse than the the Muslim ban is the uh, Japanese Americans going into the internment camps by by uh, by during FDR. FDR, mind you. Right, exactly. If they, uh, you know, a president can do bad, a president can do good. Not all the time. You know, I bet if FDR was still alive, he, he would look back and say, you know, that wasn't a very nice thing I did with Japanese Americans. You know, he, he said it while he was uh, in power. <laughs> yeah. It wasn't a nice thing to do. Damn, even George... But it's the same thing as what uh, Trump is doing with a ban. On yeah. Muslims, George Sakai and his parents don't get away were, with that. You know? We're in a concentration camp. Yes, they were. Well, look, all all the crops in all on the crops on all those uh, plantations, and farms, and down south, they all rotted because the Mexican uh, migrant farm workers split. They abandoned the farm because they were afraid of Trump, and uh, and the crops rotted. And uh, it's true. If, if Republicans think Americans, you know, Caucasian Americans, or mm -hmm. Americanized like Americans, they're going to work on some fucking plantation picking tomatoes or turnips or uh, whatever, rutabagas or whatever the frick they grow, their sugar beets, they got another thing coming. Mm -hmm. It ain't going to happen. They're going to say, they're going to say, go fuck yourself. Well, that is one of the things they say that uh, they, the immigrants, will do jobs the Americans. Yeah. Won't. Unless they so. send uh, uh, people from privatized prisons on the farms. Now you're talking. <laughs> Slave now labor. Now you're talking. I says, uh, uh, Bill Morrow says to me, "Well, yeah, but they have to earn their keep." I says, "Keep for what? What do they do to go to prison? What do they do? They had a little bit of marijuana on them. Yeah, Give me a break." Some people, and they're in there for life. Yes. Give me a break. Earn their keep. Instead of earning their keep, what about um, uh, what about the prison uh, uh, teaching them or whatever? Uh, you know, a job, a skill, or whatever. There's no jobs for when for they them. get out. Well, yeah, when they get out. There's you no know? jobs for people that that are not criminals. Correct. Could you imagine? A, I I think marijuana is the best friggin' thing that could ever happen to the United States. Uh, um, oh, I tell you, I gotta salute that uh, Prime Minister Trudeau of Canada. Oh, this guy! I'm telling you, man, he want he wants to start a base salary like Northern Europe, in can in Canada, Canada, mm -hmm. base salary. Yep, that's the way to go. Base salary, but but before you do all that, you gotta jack up the tax rate on the rich. You know, the rich have to pay some taxes. All right, I got one more small uh, change of pace before here. Before uh, break. Yeah. Tomato paste? All right. I am a mature 25-year-old college-educated man with a great career. Really? Matured at 25? That's correct. So he doesn't go on spring break and, and, and get drunk and walk on the terrace? Fort Lauderdale? No. Walk on the, on the railing of a terrace, tightrope? No. No, he don't do that. Okay. I was on the dating scene for several years when I met Julie, the girl of my dreams. We fell deeply in love and after four months we began to speak of a long-term future together. We seemed compatible in all the important ways for a good marriage. And I was happier, more secure with her than with any other woman I ever knew. Um, hot Julie diggity, hot diggity dog. had just ended a long-term relationship when we met. Long-term, yeah. One day she told me that this old lover was coming through town and wanted to see her. She asked me if I cared. I said that it was her business and do whatever she thought was appropriate. I later found out that she spent the weekend with him. Manja, manja. When I confronted her, she said that she was only saying goodbye. 
She said the tryst didn't mean anything. Remember, tryst, tryst are for kids. Remember that cereal commercial? And I had nothing to do with her love for me. It had nothing to do with her love for me. Apparently, she thought it was appropriate to sleep with this guy, and that doing so wasn't really cheating on me. I was shocked and appalled. My problem isn't just that. She slept with an old lover, but that she seems to think that such behavior was perfectly reasonable, and I shouldn't be upset about it. Well, it's not exactly sleeping. You know what I mean? They don't really just sleep with the other person. Now I wonder if I really know her at all. Yeah. And I'm thinking that I should break off our relationship. Even though I love her with all my heart. Amy! This the gentleman is asking, uh, ask Amy, Amy right. Dickinson. Right. Amy, should I end this relationship? Or take my chances that she will break my heart again. Amy's answer. Julie's choice has given you a window onto your value system and temperament. You say that you wonder if you even know her at all. I say that you actually know her much better now. She does not acknowledge she did anything inappropriate or hurtful or wrong. She certainly refuses to validate your feelings or be of betrayal. You two are a mismatch. This might also be her cowardly way of ending the relationship with you. For some people, getting caught is easier than having a hurtful, challenging breakup conversation. Yeah. Okay. You know, when I was having coffee with uh, our uh, voiceover uh, artist, William H. Morrow III, there was this girl, this, this Irish girl, you know, who seems to be very desperate to get married. Lee. And she's having problems with this so-called fiancé that's using her. She thought this was an engagement ring. She's so obsessed with marriage. She thought that this was an, an engagement ring. I said, this is not an engagement ring. It happens to be a medieval ring in the shape of a band. It is medieval style from the Middle Ages. And it is copper, which uh, makes it good for you in terms of your energy. It's not a wedding band. Would you get, it says, what, what makes you think you know, you think it's that, like, it has its drawbacks, let's put it that way, if, if you get married. Is that the one you lost? No, this is the one that actually fits my finger perfectly, therefore it doesn't fall off. The one I lost is the stainless steel medieval ring I got from China that wasn't fitted even though I gave them the right size of my finger, it was a little loose. Uh -huh. But it, the, the mystery of that ring was why didn't I hear the, the ping when it fell off my finger? Or a clunk. Or a clunk. A clink Unless or clunk. it went ping. Or a clink. Unless it fell off and went clunk on the front lawn, which would not make a, a large sound. You know what I mean, Jelly Bean? Mm -hmm. So anyway, we're gonna take a break. Uh, uh, how to how to defeat a conservative Bible verses? Hit the pause button, read and learn. Followed by promo, and then we'll see you. You know the deal for the rest of the show. Yeah.
This is James P. Madonna of Mega Life 21 Hard Hitting Podcasts, Holistic Health Talk, and Progressive Discussions. I want to talk about the very foundation of our entire organization, the newsletter that was founded by my co host and mentor, the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisman, in 1977. And that newsletter is called Censored. Newsletter Censored is truth and news fighting censorship and conservative propaganda. We believe we are living in the end times and you need Newsletter Censored. Newsletter Censored pr provides the kind of truth that most people are afraid to hear. Can you handle it? Newsletter Censored is for the independent, critical, free thinker with an open mind. Besides the reading of Censored, Newsletter Censored also has The God Project and How to Defeat a Conservative. There is nothing in the mainstream media or the press like Newsletter Censored. So simply go to www.newslettercensored.com and with your gift to support this work, get your free annual subscription to the newsletter that started it all in 1977, Newsletter Censored. You need Newsletter Censored. That's www.newslettercensored.com. Greetings. This is James P. Madonna of Mega Life 21 Hard Hitting Podcasts, Holistic Health Talk, and Progressive Discussions. I want to talk about the very foundation of our entire organization, the newsletter that was founded by my co host and mentor, the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisman, in 1977. And that newsletter is called Censored. Newsletter Censored is truth and news fighting censorship and conservative propaganda. We believe we are living in the end times and you need Newsletter Censored. Newsletter Censored pr provides the kind of truth that most people are afraid to hear. Can you handle it? Newsletter Censored is for the independent, critical, free thinker with an open mind. Besides the reading of Censored, Newsletter Censored also has The God Project and How to Defeat a Conservative. There is nothing in the mainstream media or the press like Newsletter Censored. So simply go to www.newslettercensored.com and with your gift to support this work, get your free annual subscription to the newsletter that started it all in 1977, Newsletter Censored. You need Newsletter Censored. That's www.newslettercensored.com. Okay, we're back. I hope you hit the pause button and uh, uh -huh. learned something during promo. Now we shall return to our readings in the balance of progressive discussions. Seven lucky bells. I could get a cowbell too, but remember Stan Hansen used to have a cowbell tied to a rope or a chain, or I think it was a rope, he used to hit people on the head with a cowbell. Nice. Stan the Lariat Hansen. What's the hold up, House Republicans? <laughs> During the Obama administration, you passed literally dozens of bills to repeal all or part of the 
Affordable Care Act. There were mostly obstruction bills. Knowing that, none had any chance of being signed into law. Now that President Trump is in the White House, why can't you seem to pull the trigger? That's a rhetorical question, of course. Republicans have two choices. They can snatch health insurance away from millions of people, or they can replace Obamacare with something that is suspiciously like Obamacare with a different name. <laughs> the Affordable Care Act. Just don't use the word Obama. Or they can give you nothing and everybody could drop dead. Wary of both alternatives, erstwhile anti-ACA zealots have spent the first month of the Trump administration doing little more than clearing their throats. The framework laid out by House Speaker Paul Ryan oh God. and other GOP officials last week is part of capitulation, part evasion. In no way is it worthy of being called policy. The surrender comes in the promise to keep the most popular features of Obamacare, which are a guarantee of coverage for those with pre-existing medical conditions and a provision ensuring that dependents can remain on their parents insurance until age 26. Republicans accurately calculate that taking either of these benefits away would be political suicide and that Trump who has promised health care for everyone probably would balk. The evasion is that the GOP framework promises not to pull the rug out from anyone who receives care under the ACA's expansion of eligibility for Medicaid, the federal health insurance program for the poor. But Republicans also plan to change Medicaid into a program of block grants to the states with sharp reductions in federal funding. That's what Reagan did, by the way. In effect, House Republicans threaten to force states to do the dirty deed and strike millions from the Medicaid rolls. Governors from both parties are not amused. The fundamental lie of omission in the GOP's repeal and replace framework is the absence of any sense of what the new system would cost or how it would be paid for. Hey, just cut the uh, military waste. And you'll have plenty of money. A plan without a budget is more like a daydream. Republicans do make clear they want to eliminate Obamacare's direct subsidies designed to help the working poor afford insurance. Instead they prefer a system of tax credits based not on income but on age. A 50-year-old billionaire would receive the same amount of tax relief as his or her 50 year old gardener. Why? That's, that's... Keep asking. Okay, keep asking. Because it makes no sense. <laughs> oh boy. Anything that makes our tax system even slightly less progressive warms the hearts of today's GOP leaders. Oh, well, because they're greedy, selfish, stingy scumbags. That's why. But, whether the federal government pays out more in subsidies or takes in less revenue because of tax credits, the reality is the same. Guaranteeing access to affordable health care is 
expensive. Republicans can decide it's too costly <laughs> and but, throw people off the insurance rolls. But not, but not the military bloat. That's not too costly. But if they do, they will pay a grievous political price. Hey, corporate welfare is way too costly too. Make no mistake, this has been a bad patch for the ACA. The chief executive one of one health insurance giant, Aetna, opined last week that Obamacare has finally entered the death spiral. Yeah, too bad the, uh, the Republican Party wasn't entering the death spiral. That Republicans have so gleefully predicted. <coughs> and officials of another mega provider, Humana, announced that the firm will not participate in the Affordable Care Act exchanges in 2018. That is called self-fulfilling prophecy. Republicans predicted from the start that Obamacare would fail and then did everything they could think of to sabotage the program. But in one crucial sense, the Affordable Care Act succeeded beyond anyone's wildest dreams. It fundamentally changed the nature of the health care debate in this country. Access to affordable health care is now seen as a right, not just for the elderly and the desperately poor, but for all Americans. And government is seen as the guarantor of that right. The fact that Republicans pledge to continue protections for people with pre-existing conditions, dependence up to age 26, and 12 million individuals covered by Medicaid expansion illustrates how things have changed. The GOP once fought these provisions tooth and nail. Now the party embraces core elements of Obamacare as the new normal. House Republicans have been hearing from their constituents who would be or bereft without the insurance they obtained under the ACA. A couple of GOP senators have been been talking about repairing the law rather than replacing it. And whatever Congress eventually comes up will have to pass muster with Trump, who promised to expand health coverage, not to reduce it. Republicans will win the battle over the Obamacare label, but Barack Obama already won the war. Well, repairing Obamacare is just simply removing the name Obama. It Exactly. And calling it the Affordable Care Act. So all those redneck, uh, teabagger, evangelical hillbillies that they don't have to worry about call, calling it old bummer. I don't, I know like no old bummer, old bummer care. That's great. Well, it's the Affordable Care Act. That's oh, great. what imbeciles, what imbeciles. Oh, did you hear about the, those two... Uh, uh, Russian hackers that uh, made a prank phone call on uh, on Senator John McCain. No. <laughs> John McCain kind of like gave a, 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 a bit too much information to them. Uh oh. They suckered. They suckered uh, too much information out of John McCain. Um. <laughs> well, if you remember, John McCain was photographed in Syria with ISIS. Yeah. A while ago, so I'm sure he told some yeah. stuff to them too. Well, um, you know, Donald Trump was right. John McCain was not a a Vietnam War hero. He was far from it. 
They called him, uh, the, I think, the Singing Canary. Yeah. He uh, to to uh, to gain favor by the Viet Cong capta captives. He kind of like uh, uh, spilled the beans, so to speak. Sang like a canary. Yeah. Rolled over. Yeah. 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 Scientists have discovered a remarkable cluster of planets mm. resembling the core of our own solar system. That's right, I read the article. But better. Seven Earth-sized worlds, each potentially capable of hosting liquid water and therefore life in an orbit around a nearby star. Well, you can be assured that humans from this planet will pollute and screw those planets up eventually if they co if they choose to colonize it preliminary data suggest all seven planets 40 light years from our sun are rocky which would make them more similar to earth than say jupiter a huge ball of gas Rocky planets seem a better bet than gaseous worlds for offering a sanctuary to life as we understand it. You have to use wormholes to uh, get there as a shortcut. Never before have astronomers found a star circled by so many Earth-like planets with relatively pleasant climates. Better yet, the Hubble Space Telescope and other observatories peering at these newfound worlds should be able to pick out chemical signals of any living organisms. Oxygen, for example, is a product of plants, while methane is made by certain microbes. We've made a crucial step toward finding if there is life out there said Amory Tra Triad of Britain's University of Cambridge, co-author of the study on the planets in this week's Nature magazine. Here, if life managed to thrive and release gases similar to that which we have on Earth, we will know. Three of the planets bask in just the right amount of energy from their host star that oceans could wash their surfaces, assuming the worlds are swaddled in atmospheres. Three more could feature smaller water bodies, and water might puddle on the seven under ideal conditions. Many researchers refer to the region around a star where the planets are neither too cold nor too hot to support liquid water on their surfaces as the habitable zone, often jokingly referred to as the Goldilocks zone. I've heard that term. I've heard that term. Five of the seven planets are almost the diameter of Earth. Wow. The remaining two are a little smaller than Earth. Among our celestial companions, Venus is roughly Earth size. Mars and Mercury are smaller. And the four outer planets are much bigger. That tally means the new planetary system boasts more Earth-sized worlds than our own solar system. I think we should send all right-wing conservatives to <laughs> one planet and, uh, and uh, progressives to another. I, I, th I don't think we should have a mixed planet, politically mixed planet. Other seven planet systems have been found but none with so many planets in the habitable zone. 
The herd of planets circles a tiny dim star called Trappist-1, which shares its name with the Belgium-operated telescope that discovered the planets. The Trappist. The star's puniness, it's only 8% the mass of our sun, will make it easier to pin the planet's measurements because smaller stars are more easily influenced by their surrounding planets. Of all the planets we found, this has risen to the top as the most exciting, the potential of studying habituality. The Hubble Space Telescope should be able to detect methane and water in the planet's atmospheres, said study co-author Michael Gillow of Belgium's University of Liege. The James Webb Space Telescope, scheduled to launch in 2018, will be powerful enough to spot the signatures of other chemicals such as ozone and carbon dioxide. Finding a cocktail of these chemicals in the right amounts will be strong evidence something out there is alive. Oh, really? The researchers say that luck, with luck, they'll know in 10 years, whether there are signs of life near Trappist-1. People will get more and more news about this system in the coming months and years, Gillen said. The story is just beginning. You don't say. I do say. You know what? Artificial intelligent men, uh -uh. they say that the uh, there's going to be um, the biggest breakthrough yet for artificial intelligence uh, put into robots and I don't understand why but they said the not it's not the ability for the computer to play chess and be humans it, it will be the ability for this new computer to play poker they said it requires more it is more challenging for artificial intelligence to play poker against humans, which I don't understand since poker has a certain degree of luck involved, as yeah. well as skill. Yes, it does. Same thing with dominoes. It's luck and skill. Yep. So I would assume that the chess playing com uh, computer would be the most challenging. Well, you know, something with luck involved in it obviously is going to is going to give the human a chance. Yeah, I will. Sometimes I, IBM Watson was the first <coughs> to debut of artificial intelligence, right? Uh, the IBM Watson, I think it played Jeopardy. Played on Jeopardy. Played yeah. on Jeopardy. Yeah, that's like the Star Trek computer on the bridge. The woman that the, the the female voice that Kirk spoke to for advice. That's how GPS uh, apparatuses are, are like in a car. They have a pleasant speaking woman. <coughs> Turn right and go right into the lake. No, 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 no Howard Stern, no nasal voice. It's a pleasant, it's kind of like, uh, was, was Kit from Knight Rider a female voice? No. Oh, it was male. He is on tonight, you know. Knight Rider? On channel 109 on Optimum. It's like, uh, it's like if a, if a man spent the money and had one of those real feel android sex dolls that with artificial intelligence and, and he programmed her to say, oh, you were, oh, my darling, you were the most handsome man that was ever, <clears throat> ever uh, 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 conceived in a womb. You are, you are number one master. 
you and have it wear a pink uh, I dream of genie harem costume there you go I mean they have the dolls already but they they don't have any intelligence cute yeah da 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 bum bum the A team A team that's Mr. T Knight Rider uh, George Papard and Mr. T and Quantum Leap are on tonight and let me guess why you have to watch them because your lovely headphones did not work your lovely wireless headphones that you ordered for the television uh, have an audio in and audio out jack and your new Samsung TV has no audio in and audio out jacks which leaves you Jackson. which leaves you to be jacking off so therefore you cannot watch mm -hmm. you cannot listen I'm sorry to TV programs of your, of your choice adequately of your choice adequately in privacy yeah privacy yeah like the British used to say uh, privacy otherwise you will be able to watch any damn thing you want because you would have these wireless headphones and the television will be off and not disturb anyone else the letter writer confuses adherence to right-wing political dogma with the concept of liberty at his core it is clear that Donald Trump has a strong authoritarian personality. He surrounds himself with yes men well, and attacks not only those who disagree with him, but those who critically report on his manifest ineptitude. Well, that's that, 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 that goes hand in hand with anyone with a massive ego and uh, who is very narcissistic. Uh, and, and his vindictiveness and his lies. Such a small, petty individual is in no sense a champion of liberty. Moreover, John Calvin, whom the letter writer elevates as having had a strong influence on the founding of the Republic, was hardly a benevolent figure. He is best associated with the heresy of predestination, which has been used to justify dire poverty, obscene wealth, slavery, and other inequities and injustices. Yeah. Echoes of this thoroughly discredited and unchristian philosophy can be seen in this country's reluctance to join the civilized nations of the world in constructing a viable social safety net, funded social services for the poor, and tackle the obscene levels of income and wealth inequality that plague our nation. In addition, Calvin's model system of governance was a theocracy. When he tried to institute one in Geneva, he and his followers were driven out of the city. So, it appears that the liberties which the letter writer asserts Trump seeks to preserve are of the same type that Calvin allegedly promoted. Not relating to freedom in any recognizable form, but supporting the division of society into the haves, the blessed, and the have-nots, the damned. The damned. The damned. I heard, well, I read, actually, that the uh, planet Earth uh, the uh, the poles may flip Ooh. soon, which will um, which, which will mean our demise. Oy. So, all this squabbling on social media 
and poli with political shows means nothing if the polls suddenly do a flip-flop and our goose is cooked our goose is cooked oh boy then you can forget all about political parties and Obamacare and socialism and all that jazz. But getting back to um, seriousness here, um, the Democrats better start listening close to the, uh, the American voter, to the people. If the people are getting pretty pissed off at them, you know, uh, you know they'll jump at the chance if, if, if a new third party uh, is created. <clears throat> if they're pissed enough, of course, then you'll have all your, you know. But for some reason, uh, gays and lesbians just love, love the DNC and uh, and the Clintons, and also the uh, Democrats of the Deep South, like the Clintons, love the Clintons because the Slick Willie is from Little Rock, Arkansas. You know. Uh, it's, uh, it, it's, it's, people are funny. It's like if you go into, when I was in Venezuela, years ago, before Chavez, all the, all the statues, the Virgin Marys, everybody was brown skin and Latin looking. All the saints, all the statues were dark. So everybody thinks that, you know, God and, uh, and everything looks like them. Everything, everybody, anything important is them, is like them. They're not, they're not, they tend not to be all-inclusive. You know, multicultural, oh, oh, only the white uh, neoliberals uh, want multiculturalism. That's what, what kills me. You know, they want to sing Kumbaya. They, they think the rest of the world wants it. No. No, 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 no. No, no, no. No, the other, other lobbying groups, other races, other cultures, just care about their culture and their people. Yeah. So all the fools, the all the white hipsters, better forget about all this fucking kumbaya shit. If there is any independent voter left out there, still teetering on the fence. Teetering. Gerald Palmer's column thrust us decidedly to side with Donald Trump. <laughs> I am an immigrant of Hispanic origin. Okay. Uh, a teacher and a woman. In spite of my independent political standing, every four years, I have voted mostly for the Democratic presidential candidate. Yeah, but, to be expected, yes. But, felt the freedom to vote for who I felt was the best candidate, particularly in state and local elections. In 2008, with much illusion, I voted for Barack Obama. By 2016, for myriad reasons, but primarily was the fact that he was not a politician, I voted for Trump. Yeah, I really loved what Barack Obama had to say before he got elected in his first term. I really dug what he was saying, but he, he eventually became corporatist, you know, but anyway. I have since been called every name in the book a racist, a homophobe, a woman hater, an idiot, and morally bankrupt. <laughs> now, after months of the press's inability to present facts, it seems there is no turning back for me. Trump is our president. To have given Palmer's column such prominence was irresponsible. It burns bridges rather than building them. It stokes the fires of hate and division. And it undermines our democracy. 
Put simply, if you do not want to uh, help or give to the poor, then you are morally bankrupt. You, 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 you are lacking morals and you are not a true Christian. <coughs> Period. Because the God of the Bible says quite differently. So, if you're a Republican and an Evangelical that claims to be closer to God than everyone else, well, guess what? You're a lying, phony, hypocrite, and you're a cultist. Your religion is a cult. <coughs> the proof is in the pudding. The proof is always in the pudding. And speaking of pudding... Not, not in, in mere words alone. Yes. I have a <coughs> change of paste here. Is it about cooking? Change desserts? Is it about pudding? Paste. Tomato paste. I said paste. Paste. <laughs> Tomato paste. Because I had a promising past prior to getting married. There we go. It was understandable that my husband and I have gone through some rough patches. Well, nowadays all couples go through rough patches. It's been three years since our wedding. He still can't let go of sometimes. Let it go sometimes. A recent argument just escalated into his calling me a terrible word and stupid. What was the subject? We have a beautiful little girl together, so it's not like I can just up and go whenever I want. Everybody says that the kid is beautiful. When is enough enough? Where is the point that I can give in to the thought I can't do it anymore or is this just what marriage is we have already done counseling and it just made things worse I feel really alone so can you please give me some feedback Jean Phillips hey. I Eddie. would I would solve a lot of problems for you, man. When you make your statement to your significant other, uh, your your airing of grievances, you know, like on Festivus, when you when you air your grievances, it's a good idea to also tell your significant other why you feel the way you feel. Tell them how you feel, but tell them why, so there's no misunderstandings. So there's no assuming. We don't want any assuming going on. You know what I mean? Clarify it. That's communication. And there's a lack of communication in relationships. There's no doubt about that. All right. What does uh, the expert have to say? If your husband knew about your promiscuous past oh. when he married you, he has no right to throw it up at you when he's angry. Well, it's the past. I mean, everybody has a past. That's fighting dirty. And it never resolves the issue at hand. You are neither the word he called you, nor are you stupid. Hey, and this is not what marriage is supposed to be. That's like tormenting... Sylvester Stallone, that, that he did a por uh, porno movie when he was young. You're going to throw it up to his face for the rest of his life and, and ruin his, uh, his respectable uh, acting career because of his long past? Hell no! You know, uh, are you going to uh, not buy Ron Jeremy's uh, rum? Because Ron Jeremy was it was a porn star, and now he's he's in a, a rum business called Ron D. Jeremy. You know what I mean? It, it, the past is the past. Good husbands build their partner's self-esteem. They don't undercut it the way yours is doing. That's because true. Because that is abusive. That's true. That's true. And when I was married, I always complimented and gave encouragement, positive encouragement. But sometimes it doesn't do any good if somebody's got a big bone up their ass yeah. and a chip on their shoulder. 
There's nothing you can do. Since the counseling you had did not work, you must now decide whether you need to try again with a different therapist or talk to a lawyer. If I were living like this, I know what I would do. This guy's pissing me off, man. But the only person who can decide what's best for you and your daughter is you. You know, some women and men are really that insecure. I mean, really, to the point of being childish. You know, really. Grow up <clears throat> and forget uh, about the past. That's all I could say. Okay, Chief, that's about it. Unless you got a small I one. I got a small one. Let's do it. Amid all the reporting regarding Donald Trump's ramblings and incoherent statements and news conferences, the press is failing to report Trump's actions that paved the way for future threats to the lives of American citizens. He has undone Barack Obama's executive order to keep handguns out of the hands of 75,000 adults who are mentally disabled. No. That's a that's a comforting thought having a uh, mentally unstable person have a firearm. Yes, it is. That's isn't it? very uh, comforting. Trump is overriding an Obama executive order to permit mining companies to pollute rivers and streams, endangering not only the environment, but also the lives of people who already are vulnerable and voiceless. Nah, that's another comforting thought. Yes. And I guess they call it the Clear Skies Amendment or well, something of that nature. Republicans have this uh, fairy tale pipe dream that the planet Earth will somehow dilute the toxins being Dilution dumped into it. Dilution is the answer to pollution. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but picture a picture one of those big sponges in the auto department for cleaning your car. And just picture yourself putting a couple drops of um, a chemical or, 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 or filth, a couple drops every day. Eventually, that, that big giant car sponge is going to get filled up. What about the dead zones in the oceans? Right. Thank you. It is clear that these are the acts of someone detached from the mainstream and someone who panders more to the influence of lobbyists than to the welfare of his fellow citizens. Profit before people and the planet. So much for draining the swamp. And you have bottom feeders left over. Remember, when the planet Earth is dead, morto. Morto! Listen carefully, uh, the filthy rich, the mega rich. When the planet Earth is dead, Remember, not only you can't, not only, not only that you can't take, not only can you not take it with you, but you cannot eat money. Enough said. That's it. Have a lovely, um, pleasant early uh, spring. A, a lovely pre. It's hard to believe it's still winter. Um, <laughs> Pre-upcoming spring of 2017, which is not for a while yet. Well, it's, it's what is it, the uh, uh, March uh, 21st or 22nd? But you wouldn't think it now. I mean, I, I watered my Akinacea. I planted more sage and thyme because I read an article about just how medicinal the herb thyme is and of course sage you know any any uh, any herb 
that has oils in it, that has aromatic oils in it, tend to be very medicinal. Volatile, volatile oils. Yeah, yeah. we're well, not volatile where they're going to explode on you. No, you know. Wow, well, it's the you, you, yeah. you, you can you, you call the um, the essential oils, you know, yeah. volatile. So well, that includes that doesn't mean you know that cloves, that. cinnamon. Yeah. Things of that nature. Anything with aromatic oils yeah. is either a, a very powerful antioxidant and also medicinal. Of course, echinacea is very potent uh, immune system builder. And the beauty is all of these seeds that I have planted and that have grown last year are all perennials, which means you set it and you forget it. That's how I like it. They come back, yeah. Easy. All right, we'll see you. Enjoy. Enjoy. Invigor. It was very invigorating. Actually, all the shows I've been doing lately have been <coughs> extremely invigorating. You dig where I'm coming from, sucker? Well, then that must uh, be interesting. Yeah. I don't know if it's. I think it's a combination of things. It's a combination of things. I think. Person, no. person. This has been a Mega Life 21 production.